the uh, Gibson Mack Holt house. This is an 1820 house and is home of the Bayshore Historical Society. This house stood for 165 years in front of the waterworks, which became the site of Southside Hospital, Hospital when it moved to Bayshore from Babylon in the year 1923. My name is Frank Manhart. Uh, I'm currently president of the uh, Bayshore Historical Society. Now, the Historical Society was founded in uh, 1985 by Mary Rogers McDonald, our first president. At that time, the house was located on property in front of Southside Hospital. The house was willed to the uh, hospital to be preserved. The hospital, in turn, gave the uh, house to Islip Town. Islip Town then turned the house over to the CDA, which is the Community Development Agency, from which the society now leases the house. The house was moved in 1986 to Maple Avenue on property procured by the CDA, the Community Development Agency. An example of our members' participation during the move is the gathering of foundation bricks by Phoebe Berry and other ladies to be used at the new site. Once the house was on the new foundation, the membership engaged in a six-year restoration project which was completed in 1991 when the house was dedicated. An absolute charter was granted our organization in 1986 by the uh, New York State Board of Regents were very, very proud of that fact. Uh, to this day, our membership and our many benefactors, people who give us grants and so forth, have allowed us to continue preserving this house and updating it. Now let us move on to a tour of the house. Well, morning, Bob. How are you? Morning, uh, this is Bob Jacobson, our guide. Uh, this morning we're going to give you a little short tour of the house. Now this house was built in 1820 by the Higby family and then it moved on through several other <coughs> families down the line. But this morning we're going to start you off in our kitchen. Now the kitchen was the main source of heat in the house, but in those days there was no water in the house. All right, in those days the water came from a pitcher pump which was outside in the backyard which meant that somebody had to go out, prime the pump, bring the water in, then put it on the stove for cooking or any other purpose, and that's the way you had to live. Now, this stove was the main source of heat in this end of the kitchen, uh, end of the house. <coughs> this combination coal and wood range was the main source of heat in this area of the house. Uh, it was also the prime place for cooking. And there was always a pot of water on the stove so that when they wanted to bathe or wash, they had water. The water got poured off into a pitcher carried into the area where they're going to wash and clean up. But here we have all the pots on the stove. And in those days, everything was slow cooked. They pushed it to the back of the stove and that cooked on most all day long. They want to make soup, stews, or something else and when they wanted to raise the amount of heat they just lifted these plates moved the pot over and that was it today we have little knobs we can play with but in those days they had to lift it stoke the fire keep it going now this was the oven this is where all the baking and the roasting was done and in the evenings when they wanted to warm up the sheets they put a brick in there warmed it up wrapped it in a towel, took it upstairs, warmed the sheet. That was the only heat upstairs. They were rugged people in those days. Another item in the kitchen was the icebox. Now this was a wooden cabinet that was lined with a galvanized metal with a pipe going down to the bottom and a drip pan underneath. And the ice was put in the top and <coughs> stayed there till it melted down. Then they put a sign out in the window, a 25 or a 50 pound piece of ice. And that went on and kept the food products cool, but not cold, because it all 
hinged on the internal temperature in the house and if it was close to the stove, the ice would move faster. One thing about these, they had a little pan underneath and whose ever job it was to empty that pan, they better do it promptly. Otherwise, the water would leak all over the floor and it would be their job to clean up. Uh, another item over here, we have what is called the pantry safe. This was something where all the uh, dry foods were stored. In those days they didn't have screen doors or screen windows. They had this uh, box here which had a little hook on it <coughs> to keep the kids from hoisting cookies. But one smart kid would move it over, lift the hook, go in and get himself a cookie. You know, kids were ingenious in those days as well as today. Never underestimate a child when he wants something to eat. Another interesting item, the herbs and spices were all handy to the stove and that way the woman could prepare uh, whatever she wanted. Another thing that I forgot to mention earlier, in those early days there was no inside plumbing, no running water, so the little necessity house was out back. Now they, they vary. We have one outside which was a family house, a two-holer. I need not elaborate more on that. This is our pantry. We have all our uh, dry food stored in here. We have cocoa, we have coffee, McCann's Irish Oatmeal, which is still on the shelves of the supermarkets today, coffee, uh, canned foods, and on the next shelf we have uh, salve for sore hands and what have you. We have a, a coffee mill, we have assorted dried uh, corn, beans, peas, and what have you. We also got some lump sugar over there. All right, we'll go down the next shelf. Here we have things that are working at the ready. We have sugar, salt, flour, tea, or whatever we elect to put in. On the lower shelf, we have an ice cream maker. That glass unit with paddles in it that holds in. They used to put that in a tub of ice and rock salt and turn the paddles, eventually it would solidify. Then we had ice cream. If you were good, you got a chance to lick the paddles. Otherwise, no good. Next to that, we have another coffee grinder. And then we have <coughs> the food chopper, the forerunner of Mickey D. In other words, when the lady of the household had corned beef left over, she'd grind it up, she'd make corned beef hash. Next to that, we have a potato masher, and a few other assorted items on there. Then we have uh, an old frying pan there, cast iron frying pan. We have uh, rolling pins which we use to roll out pie dough and what have you. Uh, on the floor here we have some old Jimmy John's. Now they were used to store wine or, or corn liquor whatever and when I was in service I was with a hillbilly and he brought back some of Pappy's finest. I asked him when, he, when it was made, he said, Pappy made it two weeks ago, it's well aged. We drank it. And now alongside that we have the milkman's carrying rack. That's back in the era when milk came in glass bottles, not paper cartons as it is today. Next to that we have the ringers which was used on the old-fashioned wash tubs. It put, uh, they put the ringer in the middle, they had two tubs They'd uh, dunk the sheets or whatever washing up and down, run it through the ringer, rinse it out in the other tub, run it back in, then finally they'd have to carry it out to the line, hang it up, and wait for God to dry it in the sunshine. This was the former carpenter shop <coughs> that was used by John Gibson for making kitchen cabinets and final cabinets. Now it is our <coughs> little gift shop which is run by our, our girls, I use the word figuratively speaking girls, but we all come in here and we enjoy, we have a lot of nice items and we have some professionals doing shopping for us so that we can line our shop with nice gifts that everybody would appreciate to receive and to have. Now we'll go into the dining room where we have a display of kitchen wares and what have you. If you follow me please, thank you. Now we're going to come into what was formerly the dining room. 
At the present time, we use this for display uh, of all types. At the present time, we have a display of kitchen items. Here we have a cake of Kirkman soap, old brown soap. It's still on the market. It was good for many items. Use it for scrubbing clothes, <coughs> floors, or if you had a poison ivy, poison oak, rub it on there, and it would serve the purpose. And if you were a bad boy, you may have even gotten a taste of it. Now here we have the old fashioned scrub board. This was used in the era before washing machines. Here we have a four hole mouse trap. Say four hole, yep. You can catch four mice at the same time if you're lucky. Here we have some of our days of regular infills. Right now this is a display of chinaware, willowware donated by the family of uh, from Ray Strug, Amschneiders, Freistats, various items that change. <coughs> we change these quite frequently. If you follow me, please. This dollhouse was made by a gentleman <coughs> named George Lorenz for his daughter. Later on, it passed down to his granddaughter. Then, I do believe, it came down to the great-granddaughter. They were in the process of moving and the space available was not there in the new home. So uh, Mr. Lorenz's uh, daughter asked us if we'd, we'd be pleased to display it. We said yes, we'd be very well pleased to show it. Mr. Lorenz was a machinist by trade, which meant that every detail had to be complete and to the best of his ability. He made some of the furniture, purchased some, but the small details such as matching the wallpaper for all the rooms necessary, he did that to make sure everything was just right. Uh, it is complete to the uh, parlor stove in the upper room, center room. Then if we look down below in the store proper, it also has a pot belly stove behind the German plane checkers there. And as you can see, the shelves are lined with all the necessary produce. The <coughs> store manager is there cutting up meat on the butcher block, his wife behind the counter, a little girl sitting waiting patiently. You can see this is complete in every detail. Two old German playing checkers, the little dog in front of them. It's there. This man was a true artist and a true machinist. Show them something, they can make it. Now we're entering what we call the living room. This was also used as an office by John Gibson. Uh, here we have various artifacts that were in the room at one point in time. As I understand it, this couch was in the room when Dr. Hulse was practicing. She was a psychiatrist, but to me, I think it would be uncomfortable laying on this couch bearing all your tales of woe. Over here, we have a marble top dresser on which stands the wash basin and the pitcher. They used to bring in the warmed water off the kitchen range, pour it in here. The father washed first, then the mother, and if there were six kids, the last guy got dirty water. Tough luck, sonny. Now the lady in this portrait was a Mac. She lived in this house originally. She is my wife's grandmother. And as you see, if you looked at her and you look at my wife, the hairdo and the facial expression, there's no question about it. In fact, one day somebody walked up to my wife and said, when did you pose for that picture? My wife said, my grandmother did, not me. Another interesting fact, in the old days, before central heating or anything else, the only heat in this end of the house was the fireplace. So the <coughs> they used to build a fire in here, and at night they had to be very careful because ash was blue and wooden houses, no water, no nothing, have problems. Now this little gadget here is what they call <coughs> a bedpan warmer. They put coals in the bottom there, scrubbed it around on the sheets, then they had what was called a hot sheet. Never mind smiling when you hear that. But another little trick they used to do in the old days was put a brick in the oven, 
wrap it in a towel, put it at the foot of the bed to warm the feet. Uh, <coughs> in the old days, they must have had short people, because if you look at these chairs, they sat pretty close to the ground. Either that or the carpenter had a bad eye and says, we'll trim a little more to make it even. Over here, we have a stereopticon device, which was used in the old days <coughs> in place of uh, videos and what have you. In other words, you look through there, you saw the image, slid it back and forth, and focused, and that was it. Uh, we have a stuffed bird over there. It is a member of the seagull family, but seagulls have many branches. In the old days, before electricity and gas was in the houses, the only form of illumination was kerosene lamps and candles. Kerosene lamps <coughs> were dangerous, but they were much better than candles as far as flammability is concerned. So a lot of houses burned uh, due to carelessness with the kerosene lamps or candles. This concludes our tour for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We are open every Tuesday and Saturday, the hours 2 to 4. Please come and join us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob, once again for a great tour. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the house, you notice, is in pretty good condition. It actually is an 1820 house that's in 2000 condition due to the work of our membership, plus some very generous grants from New York Community Trust, the legislature, and some of our old-time Bayshore residents. Uh, we hope you'll be able to make a visit to the house on your own and see the place as it is. Now, if you can't do that, we do have a meeting at the Bayshore Brightwaters Library on the third Thursday of each month at 7.30. If you can make that, we'd be glad to see you there. Thank you.